Across the country, safe abortion providers are few and far between, with some people having to travel hundreds of miles to reach an abortion clinic. On top of that, abortions are expensive and often not covered by insurance. The Hyde Amendment is a nationwide policy that blocks any federal funds from being used by abortion providers, which includes all government-funded insurance. This September, abortions were made illegal in Texas after six weeks of pregnancy, a time when most people don't even know that they are pregnant. In four days on December 1st, the Supreme Court will hear the Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Organization case, a case where the sole abortion provider in Mississippi will challenge the pending state law banning abortions after 15 weeks. 15 weeks is before fetal viability, which was the federal cutoff for abortion as stated by Roe v. Wade. Given the six to three conservative majority of the Supreme Court, it is likely that Dobbs will win this case and Roe v. Wade will be overturned. If this happens, it will remove the few basic reproductive rights that generations of people have worked hard to gain. We cannot surrender to this turn of events. Although they have been inaccessible for many people, for almost 50 years, Roe v. Wade has protected the legality of abortions. For almost 50 years, Roe v. Wade has protected our fundamental ability to choose whether or not to continue a pregnancy. For almost 50 years, Roe v. Wade has protected us. And now, more than ever, we and our Supreme Court need to protect it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Katie. That was incredible. Okay, um, next we have State Representative Salvadosa, a pioneer, um, a pioneer of reproductive rights in the state legislature and the community. Good morning. Thank you, everybody, for being here today. I'm really glad that Katie talked to us a little bit about what's going on in Texas and what's going on in the Supreme Court. And the fact that you're all out here means that you understand that what happens in Texas is connected to Massachusetts. But I want to bring that home a little bit. One of the things I do when I am not in the state legislature is I volunteer for the Abortion Rights Fund of Western Massachusetts. I'm hope you've all heard of it because it's an awesome organization that has been in this valley for decades. And what we do is we fund abortions. We make sure that people can get a procedure when they need the procedure and that they have the money to do it because one of the greatest barriers right now is distance and cost. And this week I had the phone and I got a call from someone from Texas who, guess what, is coming to Massachusetts for a procedure because they're not able to do that in their own state. And what this person said to me was really, really compelling. They said they're very far along in the pregnancy and they said we could go through with the birth and give birth to a stillborn child, but we want to do this on our own terms. We want this to be our family's decision. Now that's really painful when you think about it, right? A family that knows they're going to lose this child, but they want to be able to make that decision on their own terms. They want to be able to have a choice over their own bodies, what happens, and they're willing to travel thousands and thousands and thousands of miles and pay, I hate to tell you guys this, about $24,000 for the privilege of doing that. Now that's a really scary place that we're putting people in this country. And I'm really proud that they can come to Massachusetts and our hospitals. Our hospitals are going to help them because in Massachusetts we passed the Roe Act and so we made sure that that right was protected. And in the State House, I'm working really hard to pass some bills that are going to keep protecting that right. So we've got two I wanna to talk to you about today. The first one gets rid of co-pays and deductibles for full spectrum reproductive health care. 
That means pregnancy, abortion, miscarriage, all of those things that people are going into medical debt. The average pregnancy now costs about $6,000. And we can do that for about 20, we can get rid of copays and deductibles for about 20 cents a month. That's nothing, right? 20 cents a month. The second bill is a bill that would require public colleges and universities to offer medication abortion on campuses. Within the first 11 weeks, you would not have to travel. Now the other day, legislators across the state, including myself, got on buses and we traveled to the nearest clinic to, under to try to underscore why this is so important. From Amherst to Springfield, by bus and back, was five hours. Okay, show of hands, how many of you have five hours in a day to travel to your medical appointments? Nobody. And that's why we can do these little things in Massachusetts to make life better. And when we do these things in Massachusetts, they affect people in other states because it makes their lives better too. And so I'm really grateful. You are here. You are ready to demand that we do better in this country, that we allow people to make their own choices. And I'm here to fight with you. So thank you. Thank you. Um, good job. <laughs> All right, next we have um, Greta Hugen smith a youth activist who's part of SASH, which is Students Against Sexual Har Harassment at NHS, so. <laughs> Gotta unfold my paper here. Um, oh God. Hello everyone, I'm so glad you're here today. I'm Greta Hogan smith and I'm 14. Before I begin, I wanna let you all know that in this speech I'll be mentioning sexual violence. I'm the Assistant Director of Students Against Sexual Harassment, or SASH, at Northampton High School. SASH is a nonprofit organization working to prevent acts of sexual assault, sexual harassment, rape, and bullying through an art-based social-emotional learning curriculum in the Northampton Public Schools. SASH facilitators from Northampton High School lead after-school programs at the middle and elementary schools to build a community and to create spaces for younger students to have a voice and express themselves in a learning environment. SASH started in response to sexual harassment at JFK Middle School in 2017. In SASH, facilitators learn about the experiences of younger students in our school community, where sexual harassment is still a prevalent issue. There is also a lack of comprehensive sex education in schools across the country, which leads to higher rates of unplanned pregnancies and STDs and SDIs, among other consequences. We must work to provide comprehensive sex ed and to prevent sexual violence in our communities. Younger students and my peers in high school are all at the risk of being raped or sexually assaulted and not having access to reproductive health care. in certain instances, such as those of rape or sexual assault. This is not true. The right to legal and safe abortion is necessary for anyone who chooses to have an abortion. Bodily autonomy and pro-choice values are essential in sexual assault and rape prevention work. In SASH, we are working with students on how to stand up for themselves and others and how to create healthy boundaries. These students have the right to make choices about their own bodies. These students need to have the right to legal and safe abortions. To have an abortion is a personal choice that deserves to be respected. Abortions are health care and need to be accessible, safe, and legal. Criminalizing abortion does not lower rates of abortion. It only makes available abortions much more dangerous. It is clear that abortion bans are ineffective and harmful. Bans and laws that limit abortion access also disproportionately affect people of color and people who are low income. Young people are growing up with unprecedented attacks on their reproductive rights. For a decade, states have fought against Roe v. Wade and the constitutional right to abortion. In 2011, 36 states enacted 96 abortion restrictions. In the years following, more states enacted abortion restrictions, including abortion bans at arbitrary weeks of pregnancy, without medical reasoning. The Trump administration appointed anti-abortion justice Brat Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court, attempted to ban Title X, a program for affordable, affordable reproductive health care from providing abortion services, and defunded many Planned Parenthood health centers. 
In the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, even more anti-abortion bans were imposed. Now, in 2021, we see SB8, the extreme abortion ban in Texas, and the case Dobbs v. Jackson Women he Women's Health Org in the Supreme Court, which has the potential to overturn Roe v. Wade. We must continue to fight to uphold Roe v. Wade and pass more legislation that protects the right to abortion. To learn more, visit the abortion access page on PlannedParenthoodAction.org and find Sash Northampton on Instagram. Thank you. Thank you, Greta. All right, um, next we have, and I'm gonna say this correctly, um, Amherst Town Councilor Anna Devlin Gauthier, uh, who's a passion advocate. <laughs> All right, hi everybody. I'm Anna Devlin Gothier. I am a town councilor elect in Amherst, and it's an honor to be here with you today. So I want to thank the organizers. Can we just really quick, because we have not cheered them on yet, really big round of applause for them. Their and your energy, advocacy, and most of all, unrelenting hope and motivation to ensure reproductive justice across Massachusetts and beyond is incredible, and it's moving us towards that vision. Also, because I am not yet in office, I appreciate their proactive thinking in reaching out to those of us who still have that dash elect after our titles, so thank you for that. It's very proactive and dang smart. Uh, so I admit, I had not considered what could be done on a local level by town or city councils to support reproductive justice. Much of the focus, and not wrongly, has been on the federal and state level. That's great, we need focus there. Those are big level levers. That is big and necessary change. But towns and cities, those are smaller levers and they can be pulled to set up that big change and we need to start pulling them. So because I wasn't totally sure what we could do on the town or city level, I Googled it like any good millennial would. I wanna share five things that our local governments, our town and city councils can do to support Roe v. Wade and protect reproductive rights. Can you grab that? Because that's my ticket out of the parking garage and wouldn't be great, thank you. <laughs> All right, so number one, I, I'm gonna count them out for you. Number one, we can build town and city budgets which include financial support for reproductive health services as well as funds for related access costs such as transportation like Lindsay talked about as well as access to childcare. This is a huge one that we as towns and cities can allocate funds for. We've heard again and again how our budgets are reflections of our values and priorities. And if we value reproductive justice, which I'm pretty sure we do, that needs to be reflected. Number two, we can protect access to reproductive health and integrate it into existing health services. This means providing free menstrual hygiene product products in all public buildings and in places like our survival centers and food pantries because products like that are not covered under SNAP benefits. We can support our young community members' rights to make decisions about their own reproductive health through information and support services in our schools and ensuring that places where people can access care are central in the community, that they are accessible, and that they're celebrated. Number three, almost there. Number three, we can celebrate and affirm reproductive justice measures. This could mean passing re uh, resolutions in support of Roe v. Wade. Amherst did this in 2019. I believe Northampton has done it too. Yeah, thank you. Or proclamations such as recognizing Abortion Provider Appreciation Day. It's March 10th. We've got time. Let's do that one this year. Number four, we can advocate to our state reps and our senators for funding for groups like Tapestry, as well as bills which support reproductive justice. Reproductive Equity Now has a great list of current legislation, and uh, Rep Sabados' name is on about three quarters of it, so that's great. And then lastly, we need to implement programs and policies to increase democratic engagement and protect the right to vote locally. What you see today is a collective of change makers. You have elected officials in many capacities. You have advocates and activists and supporters. And we need all of you. We need all of these hands pushing this forward. Small efforts, big efforts. Small levers, big levers. But all consistently applied, all consistently pulled. Let's keep making that change and pulling those levers. Thanks, y'all. Yeah. Hang on, I'm opening my notes. All right. 
Um, thank you so much. Um, wait, who's next? Oh yeah, okay, sorry. Next we have Wendy Simpson, who's the author of the book, Helen in Trouble, a retired lawyer and one of the foundings, founders of the ACLU Immigrant Protection, Protection Project of Western Mass. Hi, I'm Wendy Sibison. Uh, I live in Greenfield. I've had two abortions, but I'm here today to talk about the first one, which was criminal. Believe it or not, when I was growing up in the 50s and 60s, you could get a legal abortion in Washington, D.C. All you had to do was pay two psychiatrists to swear that you plan to kill yourself because you're pregnant, and then pay the equivalent of $6,000 in today's money. Or you could pay a doctor to take blood from your arm, squirt it in your vagina, and send you to the hospital for a legal DNC to finish your fake miscarriage. Or you could fly to Scandinavia or Japan. People with, re people with resources could lie or pay their way into safe abortions, and everyone else risked their lives. In 1963, I was in the second category. I was 16, I was pregnant, and I was crazy with despair for the four whole months it took me to find an illegal abortionist. I've written a novel based on that time in my life called Helen in Trouble. Like Helen, all my shiny hopes and dreams were about to turn to dirt. I didn't know enough to be afraid of the procedure. The only thing I feared was getting caught and being forced to have a baby. I was lucky, I lived. Others weren't so lucky. They paid for their abortions with the death penalty. It's all there in the DC hospital records, like the 26-year-old who, after having the same kind of illegal abortion I had, suddenly dropped dead from a heart embolism. I started writing Helen in Trouble for personal reasons, but now that I'm finished, it feels especially urgent to have to show what it feels like to be trapped in a pregnant body with no safe way out. If the forced birth movement has its way, there won't be fewer abortions. Desperate people have and will always find a way. There will be more pregnant corpses, people who died trying to save their own lives. I am really moved that 60 years after my ordeal, the young people of Generation Ratify are on the front lines with Planned Parenthood in this seemingly in this seemingly endless war for a basic human right. It's still my dream that we'll win this war in my lifetime. For starters, let's hear it for misoprostol for all. Yeah. If you like, you can reach me through my book's website, HelenInTrouble.com. Right now, I am filled with hope, standing here with the new generation of ass kickers. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, we're almost done. Next up, we are honored to have the mayor of Northampton, Gina Louise Shara, speaking on reproductive rights. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm, uh, I'm Gina Louise Shara, I'm the city council president, I'm the mayor-elect of Northampton. It's so great to be here with all of you. Um, this is uh, a topic that's very near and dear to my heart. Um, but before I start talking about that, I just want to take another moment to celebrate the organizers because, um, you know, I feel like whenever we get young people together in this area, it's remarkable what they do. And, you know, I have a lot of people who challenge the movement that we have here for Vote 16. and whenever they try to challenge me on it, I always say, you know what, I challenge you to go to an event hosted by some of the young people in Northampton or this area, and then tell me that they aren't mature enough um, or critical thinking enough to be able to vote. So um, you all are truly remarkable, thank you. You inspire me. So um, I, I'm, as I said, I'm the council president. I've been on the council for eight years. As a counselor, I um, sponsored two um, resolutions supporting the Roe Act. We were the first 
in, uh, in the state to bring forward resolutions supporting them. That's something I'm really, really proud of. And as mayor, I'll do all that I can to protect and expand our basic health care reproductive rights. Um, we know how vital it is to protect these rights at the local level and certainly at the state level. We've seen this and we know that we can't rely on settled federal law. So we need to protect and bolster at the state level. We need to make states like Massachusetts safe havens for these basic rights for our residents, but also for people throughout the country. And we need to support abortion rights funds here and throughout the country. Lindsay, uh, Rep. Tabadosa talked about this heartbreakingly and beautifully. Um, those funds are critical for people to being able to come to somewhere like Massachusetts to access these rights. Um, you know, I've been working on abortion rights since I was a lot of, you know, since I was a teenager, since I was your age. And uh, I wish I wasn't standing here now at 47 and we're having these same conversations. That is heartbreaking to me. But, um, you know, I've done this work as a grassroots activist. I've done it as someone who's worked on campaigns for Planned Parenthood and NARAL for decades. I've now done it as a legislator. Um, and I vow to do it as mayor. And I will work here in Northampton to support those bills that Representative Sabatoza was talking about. Um, and I will do everything I can here at the local level. But she needs not just me and our, um, our local legislators, she needs all of you. She needs all of our grassroots support. So everyone needs to be in this together. We will fight on and the fight continues. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. Um, all right, and last but not least, we have Planned Parenthood Advocacy Fund of Massachusetts, an organization working tireless, tirelessly every day towards reproductive justice. All right, good day everyone. So my name is Shanique Spaulding. I'm the manager of mobilization and BIPOC organizing for Planned Parenthood Advocacy Fund of Massachusetts. Um, we are proud to partner and stand with Generation Ratify Amherst for today's banner drop to send a message that reproductive rights are human rights. Mm -hmm. To stand in protest against attacks um, across the country on bodily autonomy, but most importantly to stand in solidarity with the millions of people who access care and those who face barriers to that care every day, especially those seeking abortions. In this year alone, there were nearly 600 abortion restrictions introduced the worst year of a, um, state attacks on abortion we've seen in decades. We've seen also this year the Supreme Court fail millions of Texans when it allowed politicians to ban abortions before most people know that they are pregnant and allow bounty hunters to surveil and harass their neighborhoods. Many look at these events and news and days like today and fail to see what's at stake and what's really under attack. But it's not just Roe under attack, it's not Planned Parenthood under attack, it's not left or right wing politics. What's under attack are real people with real stories, lives and futures. People like me, a young black immigrant woman who deserve basic right to health care and the care that I need when I need it. It's like the people um, here today, and it's like the young people that we stand with today who want better and healthier futures. That's why we must fight city by city, state by state, to ensure that all people can access the health care that they need. Everyone should have the freedom, power, and right to control their own bodies, decisions, and lives. When few people in power can impose their beliefs on everyone, how can we truly be free in this country? So, that's why I ask you today to stand up and fight back against all that threatens our basic human rights. Reproductive rights are human rights and absolutely something that I believe and I know that you believe is something worth fighting for. Thank you so much for having us here today, folks. 
Make sure you meet my colleagues over there, Tanisha Mings, who's the Western Mass Organizer for Planned Parenthood Advocacy Fund. Sign up to volunteer with Planned Parenthood right here in Western Mass. I appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, honey. Thank you, folks. Everything isn't done yet. Okay. My name is Downtown Daniel Evans, producer director of the Pioneer Valley Access TV on NoHo Media. I want to let everybody who's come here know what you have seated here today will also be rebroadcast to all of the chapters of the NAACP starting the 12th of December. And it'll also, I'll be talking to my friends uh, with the NAN uh, the CEO, Ms. Reverend Tolliver, I've been on his national broadcast twice, and I'm going to ask them to do the same. We have written, we have written two amendments to the Constitution and our Cures Instead of Band-Aids campaign, as we call it. This is our preamble. The sum of honesty and equity is integrity in tandem with equitable equality. Taxpayer play paid employees shall be deemed in contempt of the people for any and all deceptions of truth. White privilege must be re redefined as human privilege. The destitute become working poor, the working poor become middle class, and upper middle class and the affluent remain affluent. We the people mandate Day one preschool through K-12, one America, one humanity as promoted as day one in the military as our history is documented. But why do we wait till they're 18 and only if they join the military to say we're all the same, we're all in it together? I remember Ronald Reagan telling the UN joint session we really need aliens to come here from somewhere else for us to realize we're all on this earth together? And I'm not a Republican, I'm an independent. Only way I could be in the news like this and do this program. <laughs> How old are you? Remember that? Huh? How old are you? Oh, I'll, I'll be 69 in January. So. <laughs> okay. We the people also mandate breeding education that encompasses previously unaddressed lest the unaddressed become our undoing. Historical accuracy of American history to include the good, the bad, and the ugly. Finally, we the people mandate the preservation of individual pursuits of happiness which means we don't ask for them to legalize abortion. We just want to mandate constitutionally that everybody has their own choice. Uh, and those individual pursuits, we added uh, asterisk to it. Happiness that does not infringe upon or endanger others. Skin in the game, a piece of the pie, where no one gets raped over the cold, to ene enable the breeding of a socio-ethnic economic society that all 190 different peoples that live in the United States can share harmoniously. And finally, before I get to the Honesty and Equity Agreement Amendment, they who fear truth have crafted their very own House of Glass, it now surrounds them. Just one last thing. I, I've handed out to many and it'll be posted on the 12th. Everything in these amendments. But the cornerstone of honesty and equity is truth testing as Trey Gowdy in the Senate told that guy from the FBI, you haven't taken your, uh, your uh, what do they call them, those tests? Well, excuse me for getting old. Uh, polygraph. You haven't taken your polygraph in over a year. 
Why should we believe a word you say? Well, what about the politicians? Why should we believe a word they say unless they prove they're honest? Because they haven't yet. Anyhow, to be quick about it, we have a written, signed agreement that precludes the polygraph. It, that they sign that says, I endeavor to seek, speak the truth. I endeavor to accept all that can be confirmed. I endeavor to accept verified findings and conclusions of those who possess expert opinions, expert knowledge that I do not possess. I endeavor to accept the fact that all human beings have equal value. I endeavor to promote and accept the fact that equal cannot be and is not equal without reception of the same. I endeavor to promote that no thing is more important than the truth, no matter how inconvenient. I do adhere to the Annapolis West Point codes of honesty, honor, and justice. And number eight and final is better for your, if it's better for yourself, and you consider that more important than better for the state, country, and the people. And thank you, folks. Have a blessed day. Any last comments from anybody? Yes, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, you can go check out the Planned Parenthood or Generation Ratified Vote. There's some information and little pamphlets and donation box if you want to give us any money. Um, there's donuts and cider and snacks, I think for everybody. So yeah, thank you all so much for being here. Have a wonderful day. And I believe we have a musician on hand, unless he got tired of waiting for his turn and left. And he'll be entertaining and doing a, a segment for the Songwriter Showcase sponsored by Downtown Sound. My name is Eli and I got a few songs to sing you this morning. This first one's a good one for a chilly winter morning. About that rain, shine, or snow kind of loving. Called Son of a Daisy. What's that? Sometimes the rain's gonna find you 
Never let change your knowing. Don't remember me when the sun shines down on the daisies. You blame me when it no. And if I was a candy man, if I was the one in charge, selling people lollipops and gumdrops and jelly beans, all them children's candy bars. Life is sunny and the summer money's fine and dandy. My honey's kept sweet on me. She only loves me when the money's coming up in daisies. She kills me when it don't. She loves me when the sun beats down on them daisies. Beats me up when it don't. songs about uh, remembering who you are in this desensitized technological <laughs> stupidity age artificial stupidity it's called the song Sleep, you 
came from a hole, wake up to the wolves, always at your door. They try every day, you die every night. You're reminded of the song, you're singing all along. The jingle jangle of the civilized town, the killer in the streets, the souls on the ground. Too long around the sound, your fancy is true. Hold on to your tune, your song was singing you. Love to terror is a dissonant sound, the killer in the streets, the souls on the ground. Too long around that sound, your fancy is true. Hold on to your tune, your song was singing you. Dissonant sound. The tear at the seams, the loner in the crowd. Charms the child, a call to the wild. Returning to the song to which you belong. When no power could shake your faith, no fear of pain could ever tame what death. Can't claim you do not belong to none but the song you're singing all along. Now, as you're looking back at the path you blaze from a puddle on the floor of the blood that you gave, you come a long way to get back where you came. Of all that's lost, your song remains. Here's a bit of a lazy eye daydream song. I wrote this one up on, uh, came to me up on uh, Poet's Seat in Greenfield. Looking at the townsfolk below. Cause life it 
could be so much sweeter How could they know Always on the go Sometimes they get close We sit and listen to the birds sing They just quit until they fall rain they say we gotta go get our ducks in a row enough with lazy eyed dreams but i'm a lazy eyed dreamer yes a real life dream weaver because my mind's always in that place in between the days and the days when you're a lazy eyed dreamer just keeps on getting sweet every day when all you believe is all that you see in your lazy eye dream now there ain't a thing that you'd rather be when all you believe is all that you see your lazy eye dreamer And that one goes out to my new friend, uh, Eli, that I met this morning, sleeping on the steps here at the church, a lazy-eyed dreamer. Guess it runs in the name. Well, I can't read, so sometimes my partner, Lara, when we're sitting at home, she likes to read her girls some stories. And I like to listen along. And there's this one story she read us this one morning. One cold morning just like this. And it was about a tightrope walker. And it was called Mirette on High Wire. And it's about this uh, little girl whose parents run a hostel for artists. And uh, this tightrope walker starts staying with them. And she becomes infatuated with the art of tightrope walking and says, I want to tightrope walk. And he says, you can't tightrope walk. You're little and you're a girl. And well, she ended up tightrope walking. And I ended up writing the song. Quit 
that you're watching tonight You know I'm good Falling for me I won't go falling for you Walk on your own line That's a mighty fine line you walk Where everyone will ever stand to talk Is gonna try And drag you all I got one more song for you today. And this is another one that is off of uh, an album that me and my partner Lara got coming out soon called Postcards from Heaven. And if you'd like to know about Postcards from Heaven when it comes out, well, as I mentioned, I'm not into the technological. Uh, artificial stupidity of the world, this age. So you can email me at elielkis at gmail.com and I'll eventually send you a newsletter called the Lazy Eyed Newsletter. But here's a song called uh, Running Out on Love that'll be on me and my partner Lara's album, Postcards from Heaven. Ahead. 
And if our gardens die, well, I'm crying in its bed. No, I won't wreck my life to shambles to protect my open heart. Oh, going's got me. Mom, that gets getting hard. Even rambling man is chained if he's always got to leave. He can't stay. Roads only really hold him if it's driving me home. So I ain't going to New Orleans, not in the wake of a hurricane. Oh, you won't see me in Tennessee. Waiting on the train, I can't get back to Kakalaki with my heartache on my back. You won't catch me looking at a map. I'll have my baby on my lap. No, I won't wreck my life to shambles to protect my open heart. Oh, going's got easy. Well, mama, that kid keeps getting hard. Even a rambling man is chained. If he's always got to leave, he can't stay. The road's only really old. Yeah, if it's driving me home. To get back to where I was So I made it back to heaven Yes, ma'am, I'm seeing all the signs I betcha it don't get much better Guess I'll quit my ambition this time Sure, I guess I could get one more in me. Thanks for having me, Daniel. tune called Nothing to Lose. And again, if you like what you hear, you can give me an email at elielkis at gmail.com and I'll send you my Lazy Eye newsletter with all new musical happenings and such. This is an older one, or new for you, but older for me. Lord, I hate to tell you I 
Think somebody took my honey Think somebody put my honey in their car Must have took my darling Lord, I hate to I think some of you took my honey Think some of you and his money took my honey I don't think it's funny, I think that The world can't take much from man with nothing to lose In my tank, I ain't got nobody in the bank for to put petrol in my tank. Lord, I ain't got much left of that cash stashed in the bank. I ain't got no petrol in my tank. Tell I need that dough, ring me. Should I know it? No, no. We were, we were talking about someone who could write a song that portrayed North the Hampton. lifestyle and the way the culture, how everybody gets along, gay, rich, poor, homeless, the police. You know, we all get along. Yeah. But I'm looking for someone who can write a song. Write a song about it. I got. I'll, I'll figure it out one of these days. I'll let you. I'll let you know when I figure that out. All right. Rick. I'll let you know too. It is his bus. Okay, whatever you want to say in what in whatever format, whatever. Yeah. And like I say, I'll do the song that goes oh, with no, thank it. You. And you need the mic, right? No, but it's running, so you go right ahead. Okay. All right, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Jean Louise Shara. I'm a public school mom, and until a few weeks ago, I was the full time communications manager for an organization called Pathlight. Um, I'm the current president of the Northampton City Council, and I am the mayor elect of Northampton. And I, I thank uh, Downtown Daniel for inviting me to be here in front of my favorite building in Northampton. I worked in this building for uh, five years, and it's very special to me. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, my, um, my plans for when I take office in January and the work that I've already started doing. So since early January when our current mayor announced he wasn't seeking re-election, I've had many, many, many conversations with people. And a common thread in these conversations has been the almost universal recognition that the job of mayor is a very hard job and a big ask. Um, people generally express gratitude, which is very lovely, but then they say, why would you ever want to do that job? Um, and there's, you know, there's a lot folded into that question, how hard and detailed the work is, how hard the pandemic has been, still is, all the still many unknowns which we're experiencing almost daily, um, the not easily solved issues of our world, which have just been highlighted during this time of the pandemic and are very long 
an overdue reckoning around racial violence and injustice. This is a very significant time we're living in, and that comes with great responsibility. I'm honored and excited to take on this responsibility for many reasons. One is my commitment and love of Northampton. I believe that Northampton is a really special place, and I don't believe that it's a special place by accident or by magic. It's special because people in Northampton and Florence and Leeds every single day step up to make it a special place. Our volunteers, our teachers, our business owners, the people who work in our businesses, our impressive and important nonprofits, our activists, our advocates, our artists, our caregivers, our kids, um, the people who work for our schools and for the city of Northampton, residents who volunteer on our city committees, and yes, even elected officials. I believe deeply in public service. I believe in the work of it, that the government should serve the people, and I think that the impact is most direct and most personal here at the local level. It's an awesome responsibility to have your community place their trust in you to represent them. And I have taken that responsibility very seriously as a counselor and do so even more as the soon-to-be mayor of Northampton. I've been involved in so many asset, um, facets of the working of Northampton in my work as a counselor, and it's given me a true appreciation for the depth and dedication of our city. The most important reason why I ran for mayor and am exhilarated to get to work is because I believe that this is a really pivotal time for Northampton. There are huge, challenging things in process, and this is a very remarkable moment. My top priorities on day one are all projects that I've been involved in as a counselor and believe in fully and have been doing transition work on as the mayor-elect. I hope that we all want a Northampton that lives up to its progressive reputation that is truly welcoming to everyone. A Northampton where anyone can build a life for themselves here, but also comfortably stay here throughout their lives. And we have a lot of work left to do to realize that vision. We need to invest more in affordable housing. Um, we, as a city, are pursuing a housing-first approach. We, I think, have a really remarkable moment here where there is federal and state recognition that we need to make big investments in creating shelter, um, and that congregate shelter doesn't work for everyone, and that um, we, that can't be the only option. That's kind of been our approach to temporary shelter, and uh, I think we're finally coming to realize that that's not something that works for everyone. Um, and we need to um, be able to move people away from houselessness to SROs or other non-congregate locations. Um, and we also know that they're able to experience more stability when they're in housing like that and are significantly more likely to be able to then make a successful move to permanent housing. So here in Northampton, we're pursuing a couple of projects and um, we're actively looking for um, other locations to leverage CPA funds to create opportunities to, cre to have more affordable housing. So two things that we're working on right now is we're working with um, affording housing developers to uh, create an SRO housing project right behind City Hall, build a building that would be um, housing. And we're also working on um, an SRO housing project near downtown to serve people with disabilities and medical needs who are houseless. So um, other things that I'm working on are I'm working to achieve a, uh, working to help the city achieve carbon neutrality and make Northampton climate resilient and that all of our conversations around capital investments are had with a central goal to ensure that all of our practices and policies are moving us towards achieving or accelerating our timelines for carbon neutrality. Um, working on helping our businesses adapt to a changed economy, including redesigning our main street um, for the present and the future and not for the past and also taking back space for humans and for trees. Establishing municipal broadband, which we saw again with question one, election results is a priority for Northampton and it's a priority for me. I think um, it's a really key equity issue um, as well as a very important economic development driver. Utilizing our American Rescue Plan Act funds well and in a way that lasts for generations. These are ones in uh, a generation or lifetime um, funds. Um, so uh, stay tuned for plans in January for how we're gonna have a community conversation around how those resources should be spent. 
um, community care, our expanding our public safety um, operations and creating our Department of Community Care so that the most appropriate response will meet each call for help. We have hired an implementation coordinator um, for the department and uh, he starts next month so I'm really eager to start working with him and I've been meeting with current department heads to and everyone um, is really on board and ready to get to work on this department. So um, I'm very pleased to, that I feel that the same commitment that I have made to this um, has been made by everyone in the city and there's a real willingness to do the hard work to, um, that's needed to make this department a reality. So these are just some of the sort of the big things that I'm already working on in this transition time. Um, so doing this work and fulfilling these commitments and building the city for the next era really requires action. It requires leadership and it also requires cooperation and collaboration. And um, you know, I believe that when we listen to each other and we work together and we spend less time shouting on Facebook and more time talking face to face and meeting each other with respect, we do the work of making Northampton that really special place that we recognize it is. So I hope that you're all ready to roll up your sleeves and work with me because I'm already deep into it and, um, and I want you to join me. So thank you. Amen. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I think we got a lot of I'm Rick Piva, by the way, PAIVA for the City of Northampton, resident of Northampton. And I'm here to speak on a part of our. Glad to be back in Thorns in downtown Northampton. We're here with the manager of Share, as you can see, coffee shop. Uh, they have been here under many different names in the past, but uh, they've been here about a dozen years, and they've helped step forward with uh, helping us with our Tuskegee Toddlers Fund. Uh, them, along with nine other businessmen, have helped us collect $650 to seed the program. Uh, we give the money directly to the Survival Center, and they help the indigent and the needy provide dry butts and toddler nutrition. Uh, before I go on, let me say our next show will be on the 27th. We're looking to get a place like the VFW, and we have many important people from the state coming, as in the mayor from here in Northampton, the police chief here in Northampton, the mayor from Hoyoke, Lindsay Sabadosa, and a newcomer to state politics, uh, the mayor of uh, Salem, Mass., who's running for lieutenant governor. And this is just the seating, the $650. We're going to put on an event for $20 a ticket that includes dinner, a meet and greet with these dignitaries I just spoke of. But to get to what we're here for today, let me let the, the manager tell you a little bit about his uh, shop and how he's glad to be part of this community. Yeah. Uh, my name is Josh Wood Triplett, manager here at Share Coffee. Um, we're, of course, so happy to help anybody in our community. So it was not even a question um, about helping out with a donation um, to the this, you know, wonderful cause. Um, and we're happy to support the community every day by just being here with smiling faces delicious coffee, delicious egg sandwiches, um, and very happy to be part of the community. And I'm sure you'll agree, Northampton is the melting pot of America's social, ethnic, and economic culture, because everybody here makes a minimum, I'd say, in this town of twelve and a half dollars an hour, if not fifteen or more. The police chief walks up and down the streets, at least once, twice a week and speaks to everyone. A dirty homeless person, a person who's dependent uh, on alcohol or drug, uh, even the business people speak to the people I just mentioned, like they're human beings. Uh, we definitely have the society that all of America needs to adopt here. And I think that's why we're all happy to be part of this community, because there isn't anywhere like it. 
only in Northampton, but it needs to spread to everywhere. Thank you. Thank you.